In today's video, we're going to be revisiting these three Yield Max plays, Tesla, Kony, and Amzi. And if you stick around until the end of the video, I'll share with you which one I'm buying for the portfolio now. So uh, we had a, a big day's gain yesterday, as you can see there, up 17,000 again in the portfolio. So the last week has been an absolute um, torrent run uh, that we've had in the market, and our portfolio is benefiting as a result. This is mainly due to Cornerstone, uh, and um, and some of our yield max plays are even starting to rally. So it makes sense to ask, should we be buying uh, more yield max plays here? If you need help doing what I'm doing, living financially free out of your brokerage account, email me for my e-guides at akintod48 at gmail.com. So yes, we earn, as I always say, over 100,000 in dividends at this channel. We're back up to 160,000 in dividends. And as you saw, we made day's gains yesterday of 17,000. So you get the best of both worlds when you're using this approach in the portfolio. And if you go to my performance of value, you'll see that this margin approach that I use is not so risky. I mean, if you look at a three-year chart, you'll see that we're up 61% over the last three years, okay? We're beating all of the indexes hand over fist. And even on a year-to-date basis, we're back to beating the S&P. We're up 13% and the S&P is up 8%. So we were beating the NASDAQ. We were up 50% formally this year, but Cornerstone and all the value plays uh, related to it, as well as other CEFs, closed-end funds, they uh, had a, 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 a nasty month in October. And uh, we're starting to see a bounce back in those names, but Cornerstone, just to let you know, I have about 500 grand of this fund in my portfolio. Uh, we're talking about the fire lifestyle here. Yes, we're talking about yield max names and how to complement our Cornerstone uh, investments with yield max. Uh, but uh, it's really important to note that you have to have a total approach in your portfolio when trying to live financially free and retire early or fire. When you're trying to live the fire lifestyle, you have to stay diversified so that not one fund takes you down. So Cornerstone is a four-star fund, as you can see here, and it beats all the indexes, as you see on the chart there. looks different from its chart on E-Trade or Y-Charts or anything like that because you have to factor back in the dividends, and the drip, okay, the drip at NAV. So Cornerstone drips is 21% dividend down at the NAV, and that's why it's such a special fund. Okay, uh, if you need help playing Cornerstone, that's in my volume four e-guide. Okay, you have to time it around its rights offering, and you have to ask for that special drip uh, in most brokerages. So uh, apparently you can toggle the special drip now yourself, but I call and always confirm to make sure that special drip is uh, activated. Again, find me another index that is uh, S&P linked and also drips its dividend, the 21% dividend down at the NAV. Okay, and so we're looking at Tesla. We're examining Tesla, uh, which we have 6,000 of, around 7,000 of. Uh, we're going to go over AMZ, okay, which we have about 1,500 of, and Kony. They've all been on a, um, well, Kony has been on a tear, and Tesla is still looking cheap. Uh, AMZ has also had a big move, um, as you uh, recall uh, from its uh, latest earnings. So uh, it begs the question, which one should we add here? Okay, the first thing you need to note about these funds is that they're 50% maintenance. If you go to Cornerstone's uh, uh, maintenance requirement, you'll see that it's 30% maintenance. And this is how I live financially free out of my brokerage account using the power of margin. Okay. You have to buy low maintenance names. And as you can see, Cornerstone is the lowest maintenance name in my portfolio. That's how I'm able to use so much leverage. Okay. 30% maintenance. Whereas if you go to Tesla, uh, and all the yield max names are, are about the same. If you go to Tesla here, you'll see that the maintenance is 50%. Okay. So Tesla, Let's just look at that really fast. Uh, snapshot, okay. View margin maintenance requirement, 50%, all right? Uh, this is really important because 50% uh, maintenance means it sucks up 50% of my equity when I'm buying these stocks, okay? Um, when you're, again, trying to live the fire lifestyle, you have to keep your maintenance low and if you wanna use uh, margin. And also, even if you're not using margin, like you can see here below, I have about 170,000 in margin debt. Even if you're not using margin, you still want to have low maintenance names so that you can withdraw out of your account freely. If you're in high maintenance names, you can't even, again, withdraw out of your account. So it kind of, um, you know, hamstrings you when you're trying to uh, live the fire lifestyle out of your brokerage account. Uh, my debt of 172,000 here, it's come down a lot um, from around 280 earlier in the year. 
uh, and it was around 160, which is what my dividends earn, 160. So the dividends pay back the debt in less than a year. And then my leverage is gone. So you can't say, well, this leverage, Todd, it's going to take you down in a down market. First of all, you saw that we just withstood a 20% correction in the portfolio and we're still beating the S&P. Um, also, this debt is low interest. We negoti I negotiated my interest down twice on it, so it's around 6%. Many of my clients on Discord have too. And by the way, when you buy all of my e-guides, you get free access to Discord for life and my phone number for life, which is a unique feature that most YouTube channels don't offer. I don't think any YouTube channel offers that feature. So the debt here of 170, yes, I've increased it some. Um, because I bought uh, one of these yield max plays, which I'll, I'll share with you towards the end of the video. Um, I bought some. I bought yield max and some Fepi and this IWMY play. Uh, it's, it's our defiance fund, small cap Russell play. And so that's why I got my uh, debt from 160 to around 170. I was adding to these names and I also added a little bit more to Cornerstone uh, earlier this week before the monster run up. Okay, because Cornerstone just fell too far too fast and it was really cheap. So uh, my my available withdrawal is the key here. My net account value, I don't care about. This thing could go to 100 grand and I wouldn't care because as long as I don't sell the shares, then I keep collecting the 160,000 in dividends, which pay back my margin. Then my leverage is gone and then there is no more risk. I just have a bigger account, all right? But even if the market falls and um, you know, you're know you seeing some pain in your account, you just have to be able to withstand margin calls which as you can see, this number is what's most important, my available withdrawal, 213,000. That means I can withstand another 20% correction in the market and still withdraw from it whenever I want. I can swipe my E-Trade card, credit card wherever I want in this world. I can buy cars, clothes, shoes, uh, as you know, my family and I have been traveling uh, uh, through Europe this uh, this fall, and now we're in Spain. We just arrived in Madrid, Spain. It's really lovely. Um, and uh, we're able to do this uh, because of our dividend lifestyle. Um, also, we're in a five-star hotel here, and it's really nice. And it's pretty cheap because if you uh, go around this time of the year, you know, it was, it was around three hundred dollars. This five-star hotel, the hotels, were, the hotels we were staying at in France were four-star, and they were around a hundred dollars. So you can live the fire lifestyle. It's pretty achievable, and it doesn't even, uh, you know, it doesn't even break your bank to do it. So, um, you know, back to the subject at hand, um, by the way, if you need to understand maintenance and available withdrawal and living the fire lifestyle using, uh, margin and dividends, that's in my volume three e-guide. Okay. Um, so let's go to the chart of Tesla. Okay. Because, uh, we want to explore this, uh, name first since it's cheaper than Amzi or Coney. Coney is pretty cheap. Uh, but it's not in the indexes like Tesla is. Tesla is a large part of the indexes. Of course, Tesla tracks Tesla, so we need to go look at a chart of Tesla first, okay? So Tesla, all right, how is it doing on its chart? Uh, as you can see, uh, it's it's had a pullback, okay? It's it's one of the cheaper yield max names out there, and again, it's it's part of the indexes. Now, I don't like to put too much in stocks like Tesla, Amazon, or uh, Coinbase for that matter, because uh, stocks can do anything. They have a mind of their own and they can fall, you know, they have headline risk. They can fall by a, lar a larger amount than the indexes. That's why I tie most of my money to Cornerstone. Okay, Cornerstone, as you can see, I also had USA in my portfolio there. It's another good um, index fund that pays you about, about a 10% dividend. So I've been uh, loading up in that name as well. Um, but Tesla, here it is on the chart. It popped above the nine day moving average. And as you can see, uh, the 200-day moving average is not far uh, above. So I, I, I think of these uh, moving averages when the purple and the 200, the black and the purple, the black is the 200, the purple is the uh, 100. When they go sideways through the moving average, they act as like a support beam uh, to me. And, and so it's harder for the, for the moving averages to waterfall down and start a bear trend when you have the 200 and the 100 uh, cutting through these moving averages like this. Okay. So, uh, the moving averages are close. The MACD looks like it's about to cross there and the RSI is oversold. These are usually the conditions for uh, a bounce, not necessarily a bottom, but a nice bounce. You know, uh, here's an RSI here. When we hit 40, look, there is a subsequent bounce in the stock here, RSI here at 40 and also a subsequent bounce in the stock. When you get all three to line up, the, the moving averages are close here. The MACD crosses here 
and the RSI touches 40, then you uh, get higher odds for a move higher. Okay, if you need help understanding technicals, that's in my volume two e-guide. Okay, so um, Tesla looks pretty good to me. It's cheap. Yes, it's up 100% from the lows in 2023 approximately, as you can see here. But Tesla is a, is a big growth stock, and it has a lot of runway ahead of it for its future. I mean, it's going to be in everything, uh, robotics, automation, uh, electric cars, self-driving cars. I mean, it's, it has every theme you can think of, and that's why I think it's a, uh, a top holding of Kathy Wood's ARC funds, and it's also a large – uh, position and it's a large um, percentage of the Nasdaq. It's it's in the S and P as well. So I want these indexes, also uh, these index plays, also on a ten year chart. It's on support there of the blue line, which is the fifty day moving average, which is a really important moving average. The fifty and the two hundred are the most important moving averages that both short term and long term um, uh, investors look at. Okay, this is where they place their buy orders at. So um, Tesla, I think it's a no-brainer. Uh, you want to buy this stock. Uh, but again, you want to always weigh it into stock small, keep your position size small, in my opinion, because again, you never know what they can do. They can kill you in a down market, whereas the indexes fall less. And that's why I have Cornerstone once again. And plays like JEPY, QQQY, USA, we're already up you know, 5% on this since we just uh, started adding to that uh, in the recent uh, melees in the market. So... Um, Let's go look at a chart of Kony, all right? And that tracks Coinbase, okay? And this is an exciting one because it has such a large dividend. Tesla has around a 50 or 60% dividend, and Coinbase has, look, a 68% a dividend. So a lot of people uh, like Kony, all right? And I just can't put too much in this because it's... it's it's uh you know it's it's volatile it's bitcoin you want to have three to five percent of your portfolio in bitcoin professionals say so that's one thing that you have going for this fund uh for this stock or fund this is a fund that tracks um it's a cover call fund that tracks coinbase the stock uh so look i mean we've had um this is coney right we need to go look at a at a chart of coinbase Coney, as you can see, though, is rallying nicely with Coinbase, and that's good to see. I mean, uh, the you know the upside is capped in these covered call funds, but um, but still, uh, Coin Coney can move quite well, as, as you see. So Coinbase, okay, on a max time frame, let's look at its chart, and I wanted to point out that it was cheap, okay, on its chart, okay. So if we can get this loaded up, okay, on a max time frame, there it is. Uh, Coinbase was it. 400 and now it's at 100 and on a one year chart you can see that uh coinbase was formerly at uh 120 and it's pulled back and the moving averages are really close this is what you would call a bollinger band squeeze if you use bollinger bands which are also in my volume two e-guides and um i mean this is you know set for another potential breakout we moved from 60 to 120 in a, sh in a short amount of time we we digested those runs uh, we had a, almost a 50% retracement if you like Fibonacci's. And so uh, this looks primed to move higher, but who knows? We don't know if the stocks will move higher. So all I can do is manage my position sizes. And I keep Coney in a small, as a, at a small uh, size in the portfolio because, again, we don't know what Bitcoin's going to do. We don't know what Coney's going to do. We know what the indexes will do. They average 7% per year over time. We can't say the same for stocks. Okay, and so the last stock we're going to look at is Amazon or AMZ, which you can see here, um, we own about $1,500 of this fund, of this stock. Now, whatever you want to call it. Now, um, Amazon has had a, 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 a good move recently. It had uh, positive earnings and that helped boost the NASDAQ and keep us on the 200-day moving average, which was which is really important. It also helped boost the NAV for the Cs, I'm sure, So uh, because the Cs own a lot of tech. So Amazon, yes, it's it's had a nice move, and if you look at a chart, it's still substantially off its recent highs. Okay, its recent highs were was a uh, well, it's not substantially off, but uh, it was around 145. So we're still under those recent highs, and we tagged the 200-day moving average here and snapped back above it. That's really positive. Okay, this is when this could be uh, the resumption of a of a bull uptrend for Amazon. So I like this stock. Um, but it's had, it's moved a little too far, too fast. It's almost overbought there. So I'm not going to be adding any more to Amazon. Okay. Or Amzy. All right. So even though that's a large part of the index and that's why I have more in Amazon than I do a Coney. 
Okay, the reason why I have more in Tesla is because I think Tesla has more growth ahead of it than than Amazon. And again, it's a large it's a large part of many growth uh, fund managers uh, portfolios. And so there's a lot of interest around Tesla. And also the dividend is so much higher than Amazon or Amzi that it makes sense for me to to overweight Tesla a little bit more. And so that's what I did. I, I ultimately bought uh, more Tesla. Okay, so uh, I bought a thousand more Tesla yesterday. It had 50% maintenance. So you have to keep that in mind. It took my available withdrawal down by 500. Okay. And as you can see, it's still way off its highs. And we already looked at a chart of uh, Tesla. So uh, we don't need to go back into it again. But um, you know, look at this dividend. It's so large and it, it's a large part of the indexes and many growth uh, managers go for this, uh, for this stock that including Kathy Woods with her Tesla being 10% of the ARC funds. Um, so that's why I added to Tesla and I would like to add to AMZ once again, but it's, it's not far off its highs and, uh, and it's, it's had a big move recently and, um, it doesn't have as much growth ahead of it or in my opinion, or, uh, the, the dividend, you know, the dividend isn't as high. So growth and dividends aren't as high for AMZ. And for Coney, the dividend is really high. The growth prospects are really high, but it's not in the indexes. So I, I don't feel comfortable putting more in this position. I might add 400 or so to Coney on a, on a dip because it has been performing nicely. It does still look cheap on its chart. So I might add 400 today uh, at the bell, at the open of the bell. Uh, that'll take my margin debt up to uh, 173.5 ish, okay? Uh, around 173. But I'm not worried about that my debt growing because, again, the dividends from these funds more than offset uh, the interest that I'm charged on my debt, and they'll pay back my debt uh, in a swift manner, my margin debt. Now, I don't care if I leave margin debt on technically because it's, it's good debt. The banks don't see it, it doesn't show up on a credit check, and I can click sell at any time. Um, so it, it pays me to be in margin debt, okay? How did all the rich get ahead? They use uh, debt, okay? They use loans or debt. Uh, even uh, Elon Musk, as I always say, um, he bought Twitter on his margin account. So using margin, he was able to acquire Twitter. Uh, and, you know, so this is how the rich do it once again. And name, even Warren Buffett, a conservative investor, he took loans to get ahead, Dan Loeb took a loan from his parents to get ahead. Um, corporations use loans to get ahead. So I'm just using margin to get ahead. It's really hard to get ahead in this world. As you know, 50% of us are paycheck to paycheck in America. You know, um, I could go on with the stats. 78% of people aren't uh, ready for retirement. Uh, people are unfulfilled at their jobs. So this helps supplement your job. You can work. You can, you know, you can quit your nine to five doing this, or you can go more part time and let your dividends supplement that income. And that way you can still qualify for a car or a house. A lot of people say, Todd, I'm not trying to qualify for loans. Okay. So I don't care about margin. It's like, well, I always say, I'm not trying to necessarily get more personal loans or business loans. Although I have, sometimes I just want to be able to buy a car or a house and you can't do that without a paycheck or, you know, or pay stub or dividends, okay? That's what I learned when I had my son, TJ. I tried to buy a house with my UPRO gains. They wouldn't take those gains, okay? Uh, they only take dividends and uh, dividends or a pay stub, and they need you need qualifying income to a bank uh, to do that. So that's why I'm so big into dividends, and uh, that's why I'm such a fan of using margin to juice your dividends. And then you just use a small amount of margin and then the dividends pay that back. And now you're getting qualifying in income to a bank and you can open up your life more and become more financially free. So if you need help doing what I'm doing, living financially free out of your brokerage account, email me for my e-guides at akintai48 at gmail.com. Again, when you buy my e-guides, you get free access to Discord for life, which has over 500 members in it. And they're all trying to live the fire lifestyle too. Uh, we have many channels here, yield max channels, Bitcoin channels, uh, cornerstone channels. We have a brokerage specific channel so that you can learn wh who has the best maintenance rates, uh, who has uh, the, the the special drip at NAV for cornerstone, et cetera, et cetera. I also have my daily portfolio recap here where you can track my portfolio when I'm not doing videos on YouTube. There it is. I put my portfolio in here every day. All right, so if I don't make a video on YouTube, uh, you can track my uh, moves and trades there on Discord, okay? So that'll do it for the video. If you like the video, click like or subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.